Tortoise. Tortoise. How long has this, this outdoor enclosure been standing like this? Yeah, I started building four years ago. It took almost a year to complete it. I was uh, doing it just a slow job from holiday to holiday, vacation to vacation. And uh, well, this is the result. Three years ago, uh, I uh, put in the first animals. La Certa Bilineata, the Western Green Lizard. Uh, I, I wanted uh, an outdoor setup because a long time ago I bred a lot of uh, uh, leopard geckos and I noticed they uh, were more interesting than you would think at first sight. A lot of uh, uh, cool behavior but everybody kept them, uh, almost everybody kept them in tubs. So uh, I, would, I would like to have something different with all the nature, uh, beha natural behavior. So I uh, thought of creating a, a big outdoor terrarium, outdoor reptile enclosure. And uh, finally, this is the result. And uh, am I happy with it? Yes, I am. The green lizards, that's an awesome species. Um, I was looking for the eastern, but these came up. They were hardened already because they are from a population uh, from the Netherlands. So they are uh, <laughs> climate adapted. 20 years uh, generation uh, in the Netherlands in the wild. So two fem females came from that uh, uh, population and uh, I was looking for a male from the same population but I, uh, uh, they weren't available. Some people uh, have them but they can't tell which one is from the population because they uh, mixed a variety of uh, western green lizards. You have one female that's very, very curious. Yeah, from the start it, it was already, I, is it a finger? Can I eat it? <laughs> Can I lick it? <laughs> So what's a little bit different about this one compared to the ones I've had on video till now is the yeah sort of roof you have above a part of the outdoor enclosure. Yeah. And I just wonder what what's the purpose of this? Why did you choose to do it like this? And they always can find a dry spot. It's always dry under the roof. In winter when it's really cold, there is always a possibility to close it. That was the idea behind it. In the first year there wasn't that much of a green. So uh, I had to close it uh, that year, it was a cold winter, so I, I closed it up. Oh, he here you can see there's an obvious like edge if you want to close this section up. Uh, with the screw screws, you can lock it with, uh, with the wood. That's perfect, and this obvious uh, edge and the waterfall just goes underneath. Okay, and now there's like more foliage, more plants, so you have the idea that it is less needed? Yes. Or yes. has it more to do with the winter? Uh, it, I think it's less needed and uh, the winter also is not that chill anymore. <laughs> not that cold, no, that's true. Our winters uh, have been quite warm actually. Yeah, only a few days with uh, really low temperatures. And that kills some of the plants, but uh, not all of them. Nice. And there's uh, this like big rock structure in there. Yeah. Like this artificial rock. This must have taken some time. <laughs> yeah, that was the, the most time yeah, of look, all, yes. Just looking at this, I get like grumpy because I hate doing this myself. But it looks really nice. And the animals obviously make use of it. Yes. How did you, how did you build this? Lots of debris and I put mesh over it. And uh, after that, I started uh, shaping uh, a, a little bit more. Just the rough structure is, is debris. I had to uh, make some epoxy layer in the stream, so it, it, it's fixed. Okay. 
and the concrete stays uh, dry. It's a very smooth surface, but uh, yeah, lots of algae growing. Nice. And are the animals also, yeah, do they have the option to like go into the rock work or is it mostly No, it's all closed. Fixed surface. Yeah, it's all a fixed surface. They can't uh, get in there. They dig under it. Um, but underneath I, I have made some uh, some plastic screens all around so they can't uh, get out of the terrarium. Okay, okay, so there's like a fundament that goes down into the ground? Uh, yeah, sort of, yes. Okay, how far does yeah. it go in? Uh, not that far, but it's, it's going on the floor. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I see a barrel there. Yes. That's uh, commonly used to hibernate animals and the, the tortoises are hibernating in there, you said? Yes. But the lizards don't make use of it? No. No? No. So uh, where do they hibernate? <laughs> they just hide in between all the, you know, all the structures or do um, they go? You can see uh, a dark spot, a little hole. That's one of their uh, hibernation uh, places. Ah, nice. So they made a spot for themselves? Yeah. Really nice. And the stream goes all the way around. Yes. And then you have this deeper section. Yeah. How deep is the, the deep? Uh, almost one meter. Almost one meter. Yes. Did you did that on purpose or were you just tired of digging? What was the... It, it was on purpose uh, a, a spot a little bit deeper for hibernation for fish or something like that. Ah, yeah. But there's no fish in it anymore. Anymore. You uh, used to have fish in here? Yeah, some shiners uh, I did put in here. Did and the first year it was one, one huge puddle of mosquito larvae. So you tried to use the fish to combat yeah. the mosquitoes? Yeah. Yeah. Did and it worked. So uh, after that, uh, uh, never had mosquito larvae uh, visible. I really like how it looks. So here you have this this wall. It's about 60 centimeters high, I think. Yes. How tall did yes. you make it? And there's like this rim to prevent anybody from climbing or jumping out. Uh, I can imagine you have to take into account the growth of that plant over there. In Dutch, you call it Vlinderstruik. Budlaya. 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 Yeah, I have to uh, remove some branches. The green lizard will climb pretty high. Two meters is not a problem for them. So they can uh, climb out of the terrarium. Yeah, so there's some gardening involved. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. And you have the nice rim with the, with the rocks, with all the mosses growing on there. Yeah. Looks really cool. I can imagine you also have a lot of birds coming in here, like bathing and attracted to the insects. Yes, yes, the doves, the, the, the uh, blackbirds, uh, sparrows, uh, it, it's all over here. It's really fun, when I walked like towards it with, with the algae on there, I thought it was like concrete, a concrete wall. So it's very fun, but this works, this works perfectly. And you have these glass fronts, you can also have a very nice view from when you're sitting on your deck. Yeah, I should have cleaned them. Yeah, you should, you should. This is not YouTube worthy. No, but it looks really nice. And um, you said to me that these are all repurposed materials? Yes. Yes, my dad had a glass house in the early days. And this is a remain of a, of a really, really old glass house. Nice. Did you have to do anything like to... I had to refurbish it all. Okay, yeah. okay. so new paint and... Uh, everything. You can see the, the weather and is, is killing it already, but that's fine. Nature uh, takes its course. Be before we go on to like the, how the inside looks, what's like your maintenance schedule on this? Like you have it for four years now, is there any like refurbishment you had to do? Or uh, uh, except for you know the gardening and the pond. No, only the gardening. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, on, only the gardening. Perfect. Yeah. In the meantime, the tortoise is making <laughs> full use of the space. There's also a chameleon in that area. I can imagine that like the pond liner prevents rodents from coming in and you also have this pretty flat surface around it so there won't be a lot of 
you know, rodents. Did you ever have any trouble with predators or? Yeah, I, I uh, well, not with predators, but there is a, a shrew living in uh, in the barrel. It lived all winter there. It didn't eat any of the tortoises or, or lizards, or as far as I can see. So, uh, ah. oh, that's good. Luckily, yeah. because that's, that's, you know that's something I'm a bit worried about. You know, the main <laughs> one of the reasons I'm showing all these things is to get ideas for myself, and I'm just a little bit worried about like rats or whatever. Um, uh, did you take any like precautions? I can imagine if you prevent animals from getting out, you can also prevent them from getting in. But that's way harder. Yeah. Yeah. There is a, a brown frog uh, sometimes uh, coming in. I don't know if it's in there uh, already uh, again, but uh, uh, it climbs o over the roof and drops in. So you you can't yeah keep it away sometimes. You have to check regularly. Yeah, but as long as it's not a big predator, I'm not uh, that worried. And uh, just a frog, I can catch it and release it. I always learn a lot when you're talking about plants because you know way more of them than me. But uh, d did you put these plants in on purpose, certain ones, or did they just end up in here? The big one in the back uh, I put, on, put in on purpose. And there are a few grasses I put in, carnivorous plants I put in. Lily, uh, that's it, I think. The rest is uh, just by the wind. Nice. And it is attracting a lot of insects. We yeah. see all these dragonflies and flies, and I see some more spiders uh, hunting. There's some some animals living in the in the water section. Yes. Uh, but you told me that this year you had to feed a bit extra compared to previous years. Yeah, there there are not a lot of uh, insects this this year. Butterflies, almost no butterflies. Uh, other years there, there are a huge amount of butterflies. This, this spring there was a, a moth invading the Netherlands that provided lots of food, but the flowers weren't there. But uh, no, almost no, uh, no bees, no, no butterflies, no flies. It, it's poor this year. It's very obvious we are Dutch, you can hear by our accent in the English, and Dutch people um, don't like to pay. And as you mentioned, you, you used debris as a base for the rock structure, uh, all this plate work and the glass walls are all refurbished. You even said that the pump is 30 years old. Yes. So the only thing that looks like new on this whole outdoor enclosure is the roof and the walls. Yes. So and yeah. some concrete. And some concrete. Yes. So for somebody who is thinking about doing this, um, what what's the size of the enclosure and how much did you eventually spend? It's uh, four meters wide. So the the uh, concrete structure on the back is four meters. Uh, the depth of the roofed part is two meters and it's uh, four meters on the outside so it's uh, six by four and all in all it, uh, it have cost me about 700 euros i think not more only 700 euros yeah that's what i spent on one terrarium yeah it, that's what i meant <laughs> it, it, it's ridiculous you can do so much with uh, only a few euros and you can enjoy it all day <laughs>